This is a track I made with Northern Irish DJ Stuart McQuiston. Here is his Mixcloud link, make sure to follow him. We both share a passion for techno and tech house, so he came over to stay at the studio for a few days, and here's what we came up with. So, the first thing I did with this project was integrate the MIDI outputs of the Machine 2.0 software with Logic. This allowed me to trigger the kit using one track whilst mixing the individual samples on separate channel strips. This is a common technique and if you don't have the Machine 2.0 software you can use Ultrabeat. I personally like using the Machine 2.0 because I have the hardware and I find that groove boxes are a great way to compose on the fly. Our starting point was a reversed hi-hat that automates in and out of the mix using a low pass filter. To make this I went into the hi-hat bank in Ultrabeat, found a hat I liked and then inputted the MIDI data to trigger the sample. I then used the bounce in place function to write the sample to a .aiff file, then used function reverse. I did a bit of EQing to thin out the sound by getting rid of the low end, then I wrote the automation and bust to waves true verb. I took out the early reflections and the direct signals, did some slight editing with the frequency response, and then played around with the decay time until I found a value I was happy with, which was 2.3 seconds. The stab chords were really easy to make. I used a digital synthesizer called a Kurzweil K2600, which has some really nice retro samples made in 2004. I found a pad sample I liked and took the attack to 0 milliseconds and the decay to 2 milliseconds with a 0 millisecond release. This left me with the classic stab chord sound. The problem with this synth is that it has a really loud hard drive, so I had to use a gate to get rid of the hiss making its way into the audio signal. You can still hear a little bit of noise when soloed, but this increases the presence of the stab chords in the mix, so I'm pretty happy with that. I used Logic's external MIDI function to send MIDI data to the keyboard and once I was happy with the sequence I simply pressed record and let the keyboard play itself. I then bust the chords to its own separate reverb, this time with the direct signal to increase the volume of the chords with a decay time of 3.1. The shaker is a really great addition to this track. It wasn't my idea but it really works. I recorded the shaker using the note repeat function on the Machine 2.0 software set to a value of 116, which means there's 16 notes in the bar for anyone that's confused by that fraction. I dragged the audio straight from the Machine 2.0 software and made a 4-4 side chain. Here is my chain. I made it using a 4-4-909 kick and changed the 909's to K time so the side chain didn't trigger too much. Here is the compressor. You can see my side chain is rooted to audio 3, which is the chain. It has a fairly low threshold and a medium ratio. Then I played around with the attack and release settings until it really grooves with the track. This is a great way to add movement to your track and I've used it subtly in my other instruments which I will cover later. As you can tell, the shaker automates into the mix. The bass was made up using the same pad as the stab chord. I kept the attack at zero and up the sustain to maximum. Again I used external MIDI so I could play around with the sequence and get it perfect. Then I pressed record and let the keyboard play itself. Here you can see my automation data for the bass. It starts thin and thickens up in time for the kick and snare. There is also a sidechain compression in this track, this time with a high threshold to add some really subtle movement to the bass. The kick is triggered by the MIDI data in the track name machine software, but the audio is rooted to track 3 name kick. The clap is rooted to track 4 name clap. This allows me to mix these elements individually. I shortened the decay time in the machine 2.0 software until it was a nice, punchy kick. I also tuned the kick down two semitones to make it deeper. 
I used parallel compression to thicken up my kick by creating a bus and inserting an R compression plugin from Waves. You can see I've compressed it very heavily with a long release which helps keep the dynamic range low. I've also bussed to the same reverb as the pads, which I will show you in a minute, to help glue everything together. 909 claps are notorious for having very long decay times and a lot of noise that comes through in the release. To eliminate this and get a tighter sound, I set the release to zero and shortened the decay time until it sounded nice and crisp. I created a new bus for the clap and put a Truver plugin on it. I then took out the early reflections and the direct signal with a decay time of one second. You can see how I've altered the frequency response to let the high frequency information shine through. In this section, starting at bar 85, you can see that I've doubled up the stab chords. The difference between the two tracks is that I've used different chords and rhythms to complement my original stab chord region. This technique is a great way to add interest to your track. The technical name for this would be polyharmony and polyrhythm, and it's used widely in dance music. The effect it has on the listener is that of a lift. It lifts the track up because of the complicated harmonic content and ancillary rhythms. And since I'd used these techniques, I decided to pan the second stab chords 0.17 to the right to change the stereo image and give some definition between the tracks. At this point, I decided to bounce one of my kick samples to its own track and wash it in reverb. This creates a really dark presence within the mix, which helps signal to the listener that the track is about to drop, lift or change. I love my found sounds and whenever I get a bit lost in a track and don't know how to proceed in terms of interest, I grab my H6 portable recorder and go around the house tapping things with a drumstick. Here we have a radiator being stroked with a drumstick, which I've automated left to right. I'm not going to go into depth about the automation and what it does to the stereo image. I did this purely because it's a really cool sound effect. This sound effect is also soaked in reverb. Let's move on to the track marked Clicks and Clicks 2. These sound effects were made by crushing eggshells and breadsticks. When soaked in reverb they sound awesome. The best one I ever did was for another track where I crushed the biscuit as hard as I could. The sound I got from it was absolutely huge and it really opened up the drop with its high frequency content. I used Ivory to create the pads by using its preset Lush pad and then matching up the decay time and the release with my MIDI data. Ivory is a great program and if you're using a lot of piano in your compositions I would highly recommend buying it. The pads sound amazing too. I've automated the low pass filter on this track to make the introduction sound epic. You can also see I have a solid bus compression plugin from NI Instruments which is sidechained to the kick. Again it has a high threshold to give it some subtle movement. To add even more sonic interest to this pad I've used a metaflanger with an extremely wide stereo image and a painfully slow modulation. This is an awesome technique to make your pad sound different as chorus is most commonly used. You can hear the sidechain operating when this track is soloed in the form of clicks because the attack is too fast. It's bad practice to do this, but I like it so I've kept it in the track. That's all the tracks explained, so let's have a look at the structure. As this is a minimal tech house song, we've made sure to have really long structural changes and used automation to carry the listener to the end of the track. It reaches the 6 minute mark so we can safely say it works. Let's have a look at the automation of the project as a whole. Some of the parts don't fit with each other easily and this helps give the listener a need for the track to resolve, which is what the section with the pads offer, some much needed harmony. As we made separate reverbs for some of the parts, this track was quite easy to mix. We made some good production choices as we were recording, which really helped us when we came to gain staging our mix. Gain staging is the first thing to consider in a mix, and our loudest track is still minus 9 decibels. The idea of pushing up the faders as loud as you can on each channel is an old technique that's not relevant to digital audio workstations. It's common to do this with older analogue consoles to get rid of the noise floor issues. This means that you'd push up the channels as loud as possible to minimise the hiss from each individual channel strip. This simply isn't relevant for digital mixing and you should try and gain stage each channel at around minus 10, then bring up the audio to 0 dB in the master. 
I'm using a pretty simple mastering chain for this track which consists of a linear EQ, a compressor, an exciter and a limiter. For this I use the Wave software as I master in the box. In the linear EQ I increased the highs, mids and lows until I felt the track had a good balance. I moved straight onto the compressor which is a high threshold and a low ratio. A lot of people make the mistake of over compressing the mix when it comes to the master. My rule of thumb is to always have a short release as when the release is long, the track gets quieter during the louder parts and vice versa. I used a vintage Aural Exciter as the next part of my chain, and I really love this plugin. My rules for exciters are to keep listening to the track and keep taking the exciter down when you realise the high frequency content is giving you ear fatigue. The limiter is pretty standard and it just pushes the gain ever so slightly until the track reaches minus 1.3 dB at its loudest. So this concludes my walkthrough to my new track, Industry by Design. I hope you've gained some insight into my workflow and maybe learnt something along the way. Good luck with your next project and thank you for watching.